Anna's got to get Mary to the sleep study. Sleep so. study. Magic stuff. Am I still really distorted, stars. Craig? Yeah, it's terrible. Weird. Well, Craig has that hum behind him because we still have a ground loop issue to deal with. Uh, I've got the heater on. I'll turn it off in a second. No, that's not that's mm. not what we're hearing. No, no, we're hearing something else. It's it's yeah, it's called a ground loop loop. Oh, okay. A a ground okay, loop. Okay. Stream is up. Hi, people on the stream. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. I forgot my laptop. I don't even know if I can share this right now or not. But um, I may have my phone. Can I share from my phone? I can share from my phone. Let's see. Does it say Technorama has started? Let's go to Facebook. We just want to share this out. So how is Discord working Whoa. for, for oh you? Oh, my God. Oh, my God, Brian. I'm serious. Really? You sound, you sound terrible. <laughs> And much louder on, than on. Uh, Chuck. Hold and on. Much louder than you, Chuck. Let me, let me. Uh, I try to turn my volume up on my end a little bit, and then it's like. <laughs> five. Hold oh. on. Sound like some let death metal what... band. Okay, I know why. I know why. Hold on. Try now. <laughs> How is this, Craig? Is this better? Oh, my God. That's much better. Good. It's <laughs> it's Chuck. It's not me. <laughs> I, I'm normal as always. <laughs> The priest said so. Yeah. So he said, Here, I let was... me clear my throat. Uh, is that I better? Want, I want to make sure that that's not going to be an issue should, you know, Ben or Keith show up. Octobus five. Yeah, that'll be a problem. Let me. So do I sound okay? Ooh, then I'll fix my better, better, sample better. rate. Yeah, sounds much better. Okay. okay let me back yeah, last week, I, re I tried to record myself in, um, in Audacity on my, on my Windows machine. I was like, why does that sound like garbage? You know, the volume is really low right, and to play with that sound like I was on a telephone. And I yeah, it literally is, recorded it on my phone. It, it was it, much yeah, better. It was a Windows machine Weird. Was set to 8K sample. Right? Oh, 8K sample. Set to 441. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like buried. It's, you know, oh, yeah. Windows is kind of buried in there. It's hard. I'm like, there it is. Well, did Audacity show it right? It did. But it wasn't directly oh, okay. talking to the hardware, right? Uh, so it's Windows had, you know, so you had to have it really set in two places. Yeah. Right. Groups. Are we a group? Or are we page? We're a page. We're many things, sir. Pages. All right. Let me sip on my fine bourbon. Panorama podcast. I'm sipping my fine vodka. Whole glass of it. <laughs> Sipping the last oh, of my awful. holiday eggnog. <laughs> Sir, would you like the 22 ounce? <laughs> Make it 33 ounces. Share <laughs> and post. Okay. Um, now that we've got okay. the technical bits out of the way, <laughs> thank you very much for joining and watching us. Craig, I'm going to rely on you to keep an eye on the chat, and we will thank whomever comes along at that point. Uh, hey, by the way, you missed Mark Trubel. He stopped by today. Trubel stopped by today? Yeah. He was on the way. He was All in right, town. Well, I'm trying to... Mute. Oh, oh yeah, you man. guys you guys are out running around somewhere. Bummer. What, yeah. what kind of car did he buy? I'm just trying to remember. I don't remember actually. It's a I big, big lovely white one. Yeah, I don't remember what he got because I I have he I bought wanna, a new car since I've since he moved moved away. I so. wanna say it was an Avalon, but I don't think that's quite right. Mm. Anyway. Yeah, but anyways, he stopped by because he wanted to pick a bed's plant that we've had forever. Oh. Is that the plastic plant? Mm. Yeah. No, no, I, I actually picked up, he left it accidentally in one of the rental cars and then went back and he, he called the rental car place and he's like, would you go pick it up for me? And so I said, yeah, sure, no problem. So I went, picked it up for him and it's been sitting at our <laughs> house the whole time. And then, then when the, everything happened, I was like, I better get Mark's plant because, you know, yeah. so it's been sitting in the casita, sitting on top of the fridge this whole time. So. Hey, is it wrong for me to share, you know, I share uh Technorama with, uh. Music lyrics each time. Shit, is it wrong with me to use uh, for me to use the "Baby, It's Cold Outside" lyrics? No, <laughs> you know there's that big discussion every year about that song. Uh, yeah, it's cold. It's this cold. is the first time I've heard of this. Oh no, I mean, but but every when you read the lyrics, you go, okay, I kind of creepy. Get it. Yeah, I don't know. but you know, again, it's a it's a you know product of its time. So exactly, we, you look at that. I mean, you don't go back and look at rap music and say, you know. Kill the police. You know, <laughs> Actually, that's the, the first police. song I was thinking of when you said that. You know, you don't, you don't, you don't go back and go that. Oh, you know, uh, Ice T had a band and uh, had a big song called Cop Killer. We should, we should hey, pull that. Let's talk about Archie Bunker tonight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there, there. You know, 
<laughs> there's some, uh, but I mean, the Archie Bunker is also meant to skew the, that that stereotype at the time. Right, that's true. Oh, All right, let's talk about George Jefferson. <laughs> Wheezy. <laughs> George. <laughs> that was actually pretty good. <laughs> hey, let's just do, let's do that tonight. I want to hear y'all do an episode I, of the Jefferson. <laughs> I still like what was the 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 maid Flo? Oh, Flo, she was awesome. She she would give it to George every time. Sassy, yeah. 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 Well, it's she like she didn't take anything crap. It's kind of like Good Times. You remember watching Good Times too, as well? Yep. Yep. Watch I used a lot to love watching that. Yep. Yeah. Actually, I was watching. What was that? I was watching something they were talking about. The, uh the stereotypes and and Archie Bunker and they talked about good times. I was like, I used to love good times. I don't I don't know. I used to watch it all the time. Yeah, it's kinda of like what's happening. What's happening was full of stereotypes. Yeah. It's full of reruns too. too. Oh where is it? Where is it? Oh my. <laughs> it's about one fourth of a rerun. <laughs> Hey, I'm always late on finding that rim shot. It's even color coded, and I should be able to find it. Okay, let's okay. Uh, let's get started. Time. All right. Okay. Hey, hey. I, I do have a rant tonight. Uh, that's you're saving it for the Patreon show. That's what you I told know. Me. Okay. I, it's hard Ch- for me to chill. save it because that's a good one. Okay. <laughs> Five, four, <laughs> three. Technorama episode five fifty three: The Twelve Days of Technoramamus. Good morning, folks. This is your captain speaking. Technorama. Remember when? Tech, 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 technorama. On this day in tech history. Tech, tech. tech. And no, the news. Tech. What the chuck? Technorama. Welcome to Blockhead Video. Hey, I'm looking for some last minute gifts and I only have five quatloos to spend. Over there in the media corner. Technorama. Hold my beer and watch this. Unfasten your seatbelt and disregard all safety rules. Here your flight crew, Chuck and Craig. That's what you call a last minute edit. <laughs> Just hey. under the wire. Yeah. Hey, welcome to Technorama. This is the show that takes a lighthearted look at tech, science, sci-fi, and all things geek. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. Raise a glass of holiday cheer, and we will be with you in just a minute. Our, our uh, no, all our operators are busy at this time. <laughs> your call is very important to us. If you are a returning listener, front of the line right now. Come on, let's go. We appreciate you giving us your time. I'm Chuck Tomasi, and with me as always is Craig Stepp. How are you, Craig? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. I'm I'm still we got some kinks to work out, I'm telling you. I, your audio is distorted, not your voice, but the clips you're playing. Oh. Okay, I'm that's dealing, easy I'm to fix. I go to that and I click this and okay. move that down yeah, and yeah. there. That'll be better. Ah, oh, thank we, you. We, we, it's the rerouting though. we did last week. You should have been hearing and complaining about that last week. I'm not sure why you're so slow on the uptake this week. It wasn't like that last week. Yeah, it was. It was not. <laughs> this was not. Yeah, Mr. 8K. <laughs> Mr. 8K. 8K sample. Also joining us in the binary studio in sunny Phoenix, Arizona, is none other than the famous Brian Brown. Hi. I'm feeling much better. Thank you for asking. I'm feeling much better. Oh, yeah. I think I'll go for a walk. <laughs> I think I'll go for a walk. Yeah. Shut up. You're not fooling anyone. <laughs> You'll be dead in a moment. <laughs> I feel happy. <laughs> Thunk. Oh. All right. Let's get on with the feedback. Is music better, Craig? Letters. Oh, we get letter, letter, letter. Oh, boy. There's 26 of them. Wait for it. Depends whose alphabet you're using. Yeah. Cha cha cha. Our first one is from Claudia Miranda, longtime listener and faithful contributor to the show. He says, "Hey, Chuck and Craig, I brain farted." <laughs> Sorry. Well, that kind of goes with the territory. Yeah, yeah that's part yeah. of listening to Technorama. It may happen. See your doctor if it lasts more than four hours. 
I brain farted when it came to the questions of the week and forgot to send in my submissions for favorite video game music. Without a doubt, Takata and Fugin D minor in Gyrus, one of my favorite video games as a teenager. I'm just yes. a fan of Takata and Fugin D minor. Yeah. You can't go wrong with a good Bach fugue. Uh, there are many others. Uh, the Wikipedia entry says that it's actually based on a rock version of the JS Bach classic called Tokata from Sky. Yeah, that's very interesting. Very cool. And he's got some links in here we will share in our show notes. If you go to the website, chuckchat.com. Hey, by the way. Technorama. You'll find them. Yeah. More. Yeah. And by the way, I, I'll, I'll challenge Claudio to a game of Gyra someday whenever I do meet him in person because I, I could beat him. I'm, I'm just saying it right here. Wow. Gauntlet has been thrown. Be. I literally okay. can own that game. <laughs> oh, well, well, okay. Big words. Uh, my response for good nerd slash geek gifts are, this was our question of the week last week on show 552. And it's not too late to send them in. As you can tell, Claudio is catching up on a few. We yep. have USB flash drives. Those are a good mm -hmm. budget nerd geek. Everybody could use more flash drives. Bigger the better. Geek slash nerdy themed clothing. I prefer anything <laughs> Star Nix themed. Unix, Linux. Mm -hmm. You get the idea. Uh, Neelix. Oh, wait. No, no, that's not it. I was going to say Star Nix. <laughs> Neelix. Star Nix. He's a basketball fan, too. Uh, oh, the. <laughs> I'm just kidding. The Nix, yeah. <laughs> An <laughs> ebook reader, maybe. Well, you know, Star is zero or more characters. So if you use it as a wild card, it's true. It, yeah. It, okay. Maybe you're saying KNIX theme. That's, you know, a local country station here. We are off the, <laughs> off the wall. Wow. An ebook reader, maybe, or even better, a good dead tree book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we're talking relatively affordable, a pine book or raspberry pie kit. We have another person who suggested a pie. And last but definitely not least, a really good coffee mug. You, you know, know, I always say food. Christmas ornaments. Was, yeah, was Christmas a ornaments is a big one. But yep. food, food's always a, a good thing. If you make yep. cookies or anything, even just buying somebody food. I mean, honestly, most of us geeks like food. <laughs> that's true. Not that's built true. for salad, salad <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, I'd like the raspberry vinegar dressing. <laughs> yeah, right. In the spray Actually, some of my, mugs are, my, some of my mugs are starting to wear off. My, my Green Lantern one, the, the the logo is starting to fade. And same, same thing with the... The work one, the service now is starting to fade. It's now just turning it's just into a black e mug. Uh, <laughs> it's just, no, it's just a black mug now. <laughs> he says, by the way, I also left a voicemail when you asked a geeky thing that you were thankful for, but I guess it got overlooked. Craig, are you not keeping <gasps> an eye on Oh, my. Uh, we're going to keep an eye on that yeah. voicemail. Apologies. We'll, we'll save it for next Thanksgiving. He signs out, Oni Zaruni. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Which, if you separate the letters, is one zero one. <laughs> hey, I know Zena Rooney. That's what they use to smooth the ice out at the rink, right? Ice. Uh, no, that's an Oni Zamboni. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Isn't that what you smooth demons out with? Because Oni are you know Japanese demons. Oh, yeah. well, I like that. Yeah, okay, so. we we also posted this in Facebook earlier today. I was a little late on this one, but earlier mm -hmm. today, and said, "What are some good need nerd slash geek gift ideas when you're on a budget?" And we got a whole bunch of comments. Brad Miller also says Raspberry Pi Zero, which is $10 to $15, or a Pi 3B Plus for $35. Possibilities are endless with that. Make sure you add an SD card. That's right. You do have to add an SD card. Hey, um, I just want to shout out to Chuck because he got me a Raspberry Pi last year. And, and what did you make of it? Um, I do have an emulator uh, running on it, MAME emulator. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And I've got my older monitor over here, and I can play games on it. My, my final vision for my project is to take that and pair it up with a small LCD panel and put it in my iCade that I got from ThinkGeek um, actually for my birthday of, a while back. Yeah, okay. Because it's, it's built for an iPad, but you can I saw some people uh, change it up a little bit and place a LCD in there with the MAME uh, and a Pi mm -hmm. and, with MAME and Pi and all that and uh, make a little arcade cabinet out of it. So that's what we'll ultimately do with it. Very nice. Dominic Cardea from the National Park Service says, don't panic, buy a white towel like Arthur Dent. <laughs> That's pretty good. I like the um, Hitchhiker's reference, too. Our our pastor, made was it Doctor Who? He made a Doctor Who reference during the sermon last week. Very cool. I like this church a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tabitha 
says Heidi Costello always made me an amazing geek ornaments. I still have them all and put them on the tree. My favorite is she got a tiny angel Buffy figure. Tab Tabs used to do the Angel Between the Lines podcast. And Buffy Between the Lines. And Buffy Between the Lines. Yep. Yeah, did them both. Uh, figure oh, right. and a and put a Santa hat on him. Jeffrey Power says Geekazine stickers. <laughs> He's plugging his own podcast. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well done, my friend. Well, well done. done. There uh, you go. A set of polyhedral dice from Scott Tyler. Yes. Kevin Cummings. I have a couple of friends who are, like me, Star Trek um, enthusiasts. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I downloaded the ISO files for the fan series Star Trek Continues and burned DVDs. Nice. The series is well produced and looks like somebody stumbled across 11 missing episodes. I agree. Yeah. Uh, of the great. original. With the artwork provided by the site, I've been able to make 12 sets, which look fully professional, for about 10 to $12 per set of four discs. Nicely done. Very wow, cool. that's very creative and thoughtful. Larry Yeah, because you can download the artwork and everything. Yeah. So you can yes. really put together a, a whole complete uh, DVD. Of course, you're going to spend not... $50 in ink, you know, printing right. the... <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. FedEx. I'd print it at FedEx or something. <laughs> Larry Hudrick says, I found th uh, the, the three-way pen drives, USB 3.0, USB-C, and Lightning. Ooh. Oh, that's pretty cool. I think he meant Think Geek. Okay. It says that's geek. Uh, socks. Everyone needs them. Books, too. All nerds like them. From April Stewart, uh, our friend in uh, Las Vegas. We had lunch with her last May. Remember, Craig? At the Mexican yes. restaurant? Andy Absolutely. Helsby says, Amazon Dot or Smart Plugs. Oh, I like that idea. I've already got mm -hmm. both of those though. I, I'm not. I'm not asking just for me. This is. Yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll be believe... waiting for your shipment soon, <laughs> listeners. Deviant art, ship size comparisons. Very nice. Says Sean McLean from work. Megan Enlo, the podcast ah, junkie. Go. Food. Every geek likes goodies when Bingo. cooked yes. slash baked with love. In addition, I found some really good car phone mount at 99 cent store. Not 99 cents, but still a good price. A good place to get stocking stuffers for the little ones. See, Megan and I think alike. Food. Food is good. <laughs> send bacon. You. And John Miller Jr. throws in another plus one for the USB flash drives. Thank you, everybody. We will have another question of the week. Maybe the holiday themed? We don't know. Mm. At the end of the show. So that takes hey, by care the way. Yeah. By the way, um, I don't know if I brought this up. You were you mentioned that your your pastor uh, you uh, mentioned uh, Doctor Who in the sermon today. Yes. Well, uh, it's been a little while back, but there was you know our our uh, at the church we were going to, the preacher was out and they had uh, some guest people preaching for a few <laughs> yes. weeks. And one of them was a, a teenager as a girl's a, a friend of ours. And she also goes to the church and she got up and she did a great job, you know, delivering a sermon. And during the sermon, uh, she, she worked in daredevil. <laughs> was that Celia? Wow. It was Celia. Okay. Yeah. Cecilia. And I... it was funny cause she worked in daredevil. And I went, it took me a second. I went, wait, what did she just say? <laughs> uh, didn't our pastor do something like that when you were visiting a couple of years ago? There was a there was a a, a nerd yeah. reference of some type. I'm trying to remember what it was. It's like, geez, yeah, Craig, you some... came on the right day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lord of the Rings. It was something to do with Lord of the Rings. Because yeah. <laughs> I, I think we were both sitting there and I had one of those moments. Where I went, wait, 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 really? Is that what she just? Is he Jesus just said? and uh, his disciples had to wake make their way to Mordor. <laughs> <laughs> one does not simply walk into Mordor. Come on. Yeah. One does not yeah. simply walk into Jerusalem. You yes. need a donkey Jesus to has... ride on. That's right. Go get yeah. me a tell the owner that this is for your pastor. Well, we're getting into the whole Easter yeah. thing for me. Yeah, well, Wrong well, holiday I'm not, season. If I'm not mistaken, Jesus had the ring, and they were trying to deliver it back to Mordor to, to make to, it. To Pontius part. Pilate? Why? Yeah. Wait, there, were there potatoes in it somewhere? Yeah. Potatoes? Absolutely. Yeah. And nice crispy bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my, we're way <laughs> off the beaten path now. I guess so. <laughs> that is it for that one. What do you say? What do you say? Oh, we have to do the uh, outro for the music. Thank you for your feedback, everybody. Now to the history. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Roll them, roll them, roll them. Oh, Somebody roll ran them. off with my, where's my dice? You've got your right. Google Home. Just tell it to roll yeah. something. I did so hey, well. <laughs> Drop. Roll 20 sided die. One. One. Ah, 14. <laughs> He's complaining about 14.
What'd you get? Um, well, if it was Roman numerals, invert those in two digits and I got yours. <laughs> <laughs> he got a four, I got a six. Yep. Yeah, so it goes so Craig, Craig, you, Brian, no, 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 Craig, Craig, Craig you, Chuck, Brian. Yep. Okay. Got it. Craig, Chuck, Brian. We're going on our, we're going clockwise around from the top. Yes. Here we go. Resume. <laughs> On this reiterate. day in history for December 12th, I almost forgot my line, 2018. This is the 346th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar. There are 19 days remaining in 2018. Spend them wisely. It was on this date in 1862 that American Civil War, that that American Civil War, that one? Yeah, USS, that one. U.S. <laughs> US uh, Sario or Cario? Cairo. 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 Oh, Cairo. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh my! You quit laughing at me. <laughs> Sinks on the Yazoo, Yahoo, no Yazoo, Yazoo. River, became in, had become the first armored ship to be sunk by a controlled mine. Mine, yours, yours. It was 170 years ago today that Guillermo Marconi receives the first transatlantic radio signal, the S. And I love how this is, it. it looks like the, it's almost profanity, the way it's S and then three know, stars right? in Morse yeah. code at Signal Hill in St. John's, Newfoundland. On December 12th, 1991, the Russian Federation gains independence from the USSR. Goodbye, USSR. Das war dann. And, and December 12th, 2000, the United States Supreme Court releases its decision in Bush versus Gore. Hanging Chad was in the lead. Mm. Okay, anyway. It was also was this date. Gore oh, didn't actually man, invent I get this day. one. I get this one. It was on this date in 2012 in North Korea successfully yeah. launches its first satellite, Kwang Myong Song. Oh, this is where we need Evo really bad. He's better at a Southeast Asian than I am. That was pretty good, though. Uh, unit yeah. 2 using Unha 3 carrier rocket. Wow. Hey, at least it sounded convincing. Yeah, not bad. Say with <laughs> conviction, Chuck. Say with conviction. <laughs> Kwang Myong Song. There you go. I think it's your turn. Uh, oh. <laughs> it's happy birthday time. Yes. So happy birthday goes out in this date to American businessman and co-founder Wells Fargo and American Express, Henry Wells, born this day in 1805. Good thing his last name wasn't American Express. <laughs> <laughs> right. Born today, uh, December 12th, 1862, English businessman, J. Bruce Ismay. Do you know why he's in there? Do you recognize the name? Am I the only one? Ismay? Go watch Titanic. Uh, no, oh, um, is he one of the founders? I do the, the, he the was funders. On board the oh. fund, he was on, yeah, on it. Okay, yeah, I think he funded it or something. Okay. I was one I, of those people. I, I both boycotted Titanic because uh, Star Wars. What? It, it out <laughs> it outperformed Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. Okay. in the box office. <laughs> I thought you were going to say something like Celine Dion or hey, something. I don't not know. like I had a stake in the outperforming money, the okay, money that was coming right. in. But, <laughs> hey. Walter Benona Sharp, the American businessman who co-founded the Hughes Tool Company, was born 148 years ago. He, he would be better off calling it the Sharp Tool Company. Something oh, like that. Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> uh, born December 12th, yeah. 1881, Polish-American businessman co-founded uh, Warner Brothers, Harry Warner. If he was Polish, wouldn't it be Varner? Var- Varner? Brothers? No, no, we came to America. It's okay. Warner. Ah, uh, gotcha. Good, good thing his next name wasn't Disney. Go. No. American actor <laughs> Edward G. Robinson. Or was born song. <laughs> 125 years ago today. Happy uh-huh. birthday. You dirty rat. Yeah. It's Clayton's for you. That's right. Yeah. Born See? December 12, 1900. American director and dancer. Sammy Davis Jr. I can't do a good Sammy today. <laughs> Sammy. Sammy Davis Jr. Uh, Sammy Davis Sr. So, senior, senior. Oh, you, you his both, dad. Hey, you both sound too white. Sorry, <laughs> it's not working. It's All not right. Working. <laughs> uh, American singer, actor, producer Frank Sinatra was born 103 years ago today. Here's looking at you, kid. And there's a street hey. named after him in Vegas. Yeah, okay, I'm sure there is. Um, probably five. Frank Sinatra. American Boulevard. game show, huh? Frank Sinatra Boulevard. It runs behind the Bellagio and many other casinos right along that highway. Never mind. Mm. Keep going. <laughs> okay. Amer- American game show host producer Bob Barker is 95 today. Have your cats and dogs spayed and neutered. That's right. Robert and your N- podcast host. <laughs> Robert Noyce, American inventor and businessman, co-founded the Intel Corporation. He was born that same date in 1927. And you know what I think of every time I hear his name? One of my coworkers, instead of saying nice, noise, noise, noise. That's right. <laughs> yeah. like, uh, no, now I got to think of the Intel co-founder. <laughs> that's that's from uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine. That's why. Ah, uh, uh, American singer and actress Connie Francis is eighty today. 
Wow, an American singer, tele- yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, American singer, television personality Dion Warwick is born uh, born on this date in 1940. Another one that's still alive, amazing, yeah. And another yeah. singer, Grover Washington Jr., the singer, songwriter, saxophonist, and producer, was born 75 years ago today. American singer, songwriter, drummer, and actress Sheila E. Oh boy, it's gonna make you feel old. 61 today. <laughs> she Whoa. wants to lead. Glamorous life. life. That's and right. What else did she sing? Nobody knows. Yeah, that was pretty much it. <laughs> Listener birthdays today include four from the December 12th calendar date. Decker D, former co-worker Chad. Uh, Kevin Burns, Soul Blaze. Matt Blocker, a.k.a. The Giant. Happy birthday, Matt. Hope you're still out there listening. We miss seeing you at Dragon Con. Rob Real, who we do see regularly Surreal, at Real, yeah. Dragon Con, uh, is also on the 12th. On the 14th is Michael Spence from the Brother Osric Scriptorium. And Yorga Shrawin, one of our very good friends, dedicated listener, frequent postcard sender. Yep. <laughs> and and, recipient. Me- and, face- and Facebook Messenger sender. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and lots of feedback is also born today. If you want to get on the birthday calendar, then you can go to chuckchat.com slash wiki. You see there on the bottom of the screen if you're watching. That's the way it was on this day in history for December 12th, 2018. Bada boom, bada bing. <laughs> Speaking of which, I've been watching more Monty Python. <laughs> uh, I can tell, obviously. Oh, man. That is still edit good that. stuff. There are some real stinker sketches in that show. And oh, then yeah? you're like, yeah. we're halfway through the show and I haven't even laughed once. And then they just unload a zinger like, this is classic. I'm going to edit our music right there and add the... Just because. <laughs> yeah. The Monty Python one specifically. Yeah. All yeah. right. Have you ever wanted a lightsaber? Well... You do not know how bad. Duh. How much money could- you got? I could have almost willed one in existence when I was a kid. How much money you got? You think they're expensive at the cons? Well, <laughs> now you can own Luke Skywalker's original from episode four. Luke Skywalker might have inherited his lightsaber from his dear old Darth dad, but you don't have to wait until <laughs> the destruction of Alderaan to get your very own as long as you have a few hundred thousand dollars laying around. Dang! Hollywood Auction House oh. Profiles in History is offering the original lightsaber prop used by Mark Hamill in 1977. Star Wars A New Hope, and it is estimated at a value between $150,000 and $200,000. I'm actually surprised it's that low. Yeah, well, I have a feeling it's going to be more. I I think I have a feeling it's going to be more when they... Yes, I wouldn't be surprised if that thing approaches a million. And, uh, you know, the thing is, is it's it also depends on how good a condition it is and that sort of thing. True. It may have been kicking around a storeroom for a while. You know, honestly, I'd rather see, you know, um, somebody build one. Because you see them on YouTube all the time, people, yeah. the builders that do build stuff. Um, who was it that I saw that just recently did a, the blaster? Oh, it was oh. Adam from Mythbusters. The oh really? Yeah, he did the he did the like Hansel Hans, 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 Hans blaster, wow. and it was pretty interesting. And he did, it was a one day build. He did it. It was pretty cool. The, the, hey, you mean the like fact this? That they, hey, look at my camera. What? That's not Hansel's blaster. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a, no, it's Luke's. I mean, that's not Luke's. It's actually that's dark. a I hand grip from a mountain bike. bike. That's sort of. <laughs> That's off your mountain, but yeah, dude, come on. Where's the blade? Actually, the, ba- the batteries are dead. Don't look in the end of it. Yeah, you see, this is he'll, he'll, lay, he'll now blast listen, I, bought, I did build it off some instructions. Yes, the handle is, uh, it just happened to fit on there, but I bought a toy lightsaber, put the guts inside, so it actually, uh, it'll play sound, it'll do sound, and, you know, you move it around, it'll change. <laughs> I can just see Craig Zarg, and it's like Technorama now looking for a (laughs) co-host. Comes back next week with an eye patch. patch. (laughs) Ryan, you've been promoted. Well, the fact that they called out this is the one from Episode Four makes me think they're they use different lightsaber, different replicas in different movies. They do. Okay, so each movie's got slightly different replicas. It's kind of like Hansel's blaster is different from Episode Four. Yeah, but it's the same. It's supposed to be the same one that he got from his dad, and he you know chucks it over his shoulder in. Yeah. Anyway, no, no, okay. it's it's not though. I mean, oh, that's... that was a spoiler alert. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> spoiler yeah. alert. Hey, uh, John Miller Jr. says uh, for that price, it better come with Mark Hamill himself. <laughs> wow. True. Hand present. Uh, okay, I I'd, I'd buy it for that. <laughs> Just... 
So what else are they yeah. saying? They're selling other things too, the, right? The yeah. prop that taught millions of kid, kids to make <laughs> noises, just like that, that's how it's spelled, is being <laughs> sold as part of the Blockbuster Hollywood Treasures auction that includes not only items from the Star Wars franchise, but other classic firms as well. For instance, Star Wars fans can get a pair of C-3PO's hands. <laughs> that's a little hey, That was Luke's hand that got disconnected. From uh, Return of the Jedi. Yeah. An yeah. estimated 40 to 60K or they could try instead for an Imperial Scout Trooper helmet from Jedi, estimated at 100 to 150. Wow. Good gravy. Plus, there's original Star Wars Force Awakens Stormtrooper helmet signed by Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher, Hamill, Daisy Ridley, and other cast available, estimated at 80 to 120. Now, that's pretty cool. I'd pay good money for those autographs and that's, everything. Those that's autographs are worth something. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's a good one. That would be a good one. Especially since Harrison Ford got killed in, you know, by. His son. And Carrie Fisher isn't with us anymore. Yep. That's so. right. Uh, there's also goodies for Trekkies, including awesome green tunic worn by William Shatner. Captain Kirk in the show's third season estimated to sell for sixty to 80000 Meanwhile, fashion forward alien killer. Craig, you going to buy that for the cruise? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. Just to show I'll up Clinton. It. Yeah, because we do that other yeah. podcast. The topic is Trek. I actually got an original yeah. Trek thing. Yes. <laughs> Suck it, man. Meanwhile, fashion forward alien killers can buy the leather jacket, pants, and custom Reebok high top sneakers, plus the pulse rifle and flamethrower props worn by Sigourney Weaver in James Cameron. Mm. Aliens, mm. an estimated sale price of, oh, a paltry. Three hundred to 500000 Oh, I got that laying around in, yeah. in small change. Piece of cake. There's lots more, including props from Raiders of the Lost Ark, Terminator 3, and the James Bond film, You Only Live Twice, among many others. See the complete details by going through our show notes on there. The auction takes place December 11th through 13th in Los Angeles. Let's take a road trip next weekend, shall we, Brian? Yeah, sounds good. And let's oh, uh, Next week, it's like in two days. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. A couple yeah. days, and it's done. I'm done. Yeah. You can make it there. At the Pally Center for Media in Beverly Hills. They tore down the pally and put up a parking lot. Oh, there's lot. a picture of C-3PO's hands. I, did, I actually didn't follow the link. Um, that's cool. The helmet looks awesome. Oh, the Star Trooper? The the, the Scout Trooper? Yeah, you can see the the, uh, the signature's right on the forehead. There you cool. go. Oh, I mean, the, I mean the one with all, this, with all the autographs. That's yeah. pretty yeah. cool. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That'd right. be awesome. We'll take a quick break. We're going to be back with the Hacks and Strange Stories. We have... Another song mashed up. And <laughs> oh some... Or un- other earthly sounds. We will be right back. Hang out with us. Be right there. If you were to take two battery backup units and connect one to the other, would they constantly each other forever. autograph too you know every time i hear what well, we kind of did we just heard him okay um but every time i hear that little clip that you that id i keep thinking it sounds like t morse <laughs> all righty then okay all right brian well, if he we doesn't have... know go ahead he, he does a he does he he did something for us a while back and it sounds just like that it sounds like i'll uh, have to see if bit. i can find that we can do a voice comparison or maybe we can get him to do more he can he can fake being Richard Hatch. And he should just join us on the show some again. He should. Yes, he should. He should. He's got Discord. He can jump right in. He's got Patreon. <laughs> Let's fly him out. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, <laughs> he's got. Oh, by the way, it's a cargo uh, plane with. He's got to fly with chickens in. A, no, it's yeah. a, it's actually a crate that will punch holes in, so he can breathe and in uh, in a dung plane. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he's, no, it's actually coming ground by ground. A train so, full yeah. of dung. <laughs> a train full of dung. <laughs> Man. Speaking of dung heads, we have a we have a story here. Would you like to take this one? Sure. Back? 
Thief steals laptop, sends apologetic email to owner. Sorry. <laughs> uh, a university student who recently had his laptop stolen allegedly received an apology email from the thief in which the person tried to justify the crime by claiming they were really poor. An apologetic email went viral on Twitter after Birmingham resident Stevie Valentine shared a screen grab of the caption. So my flatmate's laptop got stolen today. Please uh, pre-, pre what the thief sent I him. I think that should be read. Yeah, I guess or something like that. Uh, the thief starts <laughs> off by writing that he, she is very, very sorry for stealing the laptop and then tries to justify the crime by stating that he or she is extremely poor and needed the money. The alleged laptop then goes uh, laptop thief then goes on to write that he or she uh, could have also taken the victim's phone and wallet, but chose not to. Oh, that was courteous. <laughs> yeah, I left your phone and wallet, so hope that slightly makes up for something. The email reads. Gee, thanks. <laughs> and and the message from the the the. Go ahead. Yeah, this is um uh you know I hope that makes it slim slightly for something. I can see your university student. If there's any files such as university work here that you need, let me know and I'll send them to you here once again. I am sorry. And the comments yeah. they got back in this thread. Uh, doesn't that sound like the nicest thief ever? I mean, mm-hmm. really, uh, that's what it is. But wait, it gets better. Hoping to make amends, the thief even offers to send the laptop owner the import files, which I just said. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yes. Yeah, and then um, it goes uh, on. So there's, it, it, if you really wanted to be a great guy, you would have wrote your next paper. <laughs> yeah. And, and they yeah. say there's no honor amongst thieves. This, as shaking my head. This must be in the spirit of the thief that followed Jesus into paradise. Uh, <laughs> if he's really sorry, he'll write the next essay. <laughs> Just buy the laptop back from him if he needs the money. Uh, That's actually not a half bad idea. But, you know, being a starving college student, I'm sure he's just not loaded yeah. with money. Yeah. I mean, That's it sucks. is. I mean, at least the thief does show some remorse, but still it's a loss of a laptop. How did he know who to send the message to? It was probably, the email is probably on the laptop yeah, itself. So why don't you have a security lock? University student? Dumb still? You encrypt your hard drive. Yeah, you use the fingerprint scanner or something. It only takes one. once. Yeah. So I'm sure they learned, but yeah. Hmm. Sad, but uh, interesting story. There are two types of people in this world. Those who have lost data and those who will. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. All right, Craig, I want to play this one more time just so our listeners get the idea of where we're headed with this next story. Keep thoughts. All right. <laughs> If you were to take two battery backup units and connect one to the other, would they constantly recharge each other? No. Forever? No, they wouldn't because your battery backup units are plugged into power sources no. each. So, you know. Craig made. Hey, <laughs> don't let science get in the oh, way don't of my logic. Craig, has Craig a place, made right. that in June of 2005. Now, that is. or July of 2005. That's about a month after he joined the show. Okay, okay, it's true. Yeah, so the, the show was only two months old at this point. Fair. Yeah. Craig has this crazy what? idea of throwing so many. It's kind of like Mystery Science Theater, how they throw a lot of comments out there, and you laugh at maybe a third of them, but there's still a lot. To right. Laugh it's at. true. That's the way Craig's getting with his prophecy on podcasting. <laughs> it's it's qu- it's quantity, not one. quality. It, <laughs> that was a, that that's what was you're saying. <laughs> that's what it's, that's the, the message I'm getting out of this. So it, but <laughs> this is another one of Craig's crazy prophecies coming to light. Craig, the story's all yours, man. Hey, if you throw an, enough stuff at the wall, something's going to stick, right? Yeah. Stuff. Anyway, kind of like the paleo future things we do on, on this podcast. Like, who knew in 1940 that these crazy ideas would somehow come true? Well, true. here's well, another one from 2005. Yeah, and on the other, on the flip side, I put this article in here without saying anything to Chuck because I knew he was going to play that geek thought. <laughs> of course you did. Find anyway. the darn thing. <laughs> yeah, so there's this phone. It's un, it says unlimited power Asus um, ROG, R, Rogue or ROG phone charges when plugged into itself. Solves world's battery problems. Yeah, <laughs> of course it does. Sure. So, so battery technology has been slow to evolve, which limits how much uh, processing power we can pack into a pocket-sized device. If only there were some magical new technology that could solve the world's battery woes. Graphene, lithium air. Lithium no, air. the answer, my friends, is the Asus ROG phone. This is a modern marvel of mobile technology. It has two USB-C ports. So obviously it can charge itself. <laughs> the Rogue phone, Rogue RG, I still don't know which way to go with that, um, has the unusual USB port on the bottom of the phone for charging, but it's a gaming phone. Gaming phones need to have extra things. Okay. Things such as a second USB port on the side to attach various 
accessories like the active cooling bracket or desktop dock. It turns out you can turn, you can also run a, uh, a type C table uh, cable from one port to another uh, on the phone thinking it's charging. The phone also thinks it's a USB drive <laughs> below. I There's see my own explained. files. Yes. <laughs> well, look at that. I'm going to think I'm going to copy these. Um, so, <laughs> so you can, yeah, you keep getting that. Can, can you imagine uh, copying into itself? File, Why does it keep yeah. filling up the SD <laughs> card? <laughs> so do you want to yeah. avoid this file? I don't understand. Yeah. So you can get, can you get unlimited power with this trick? Sadly, no. The phone really isn't charging. It's just really confused. Yeah. <laughs> so much for a smartphone, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, you will unfortunately still have to plug the ROG phone to a battery. The phone's inability to understand that it has two ports is amusing. Though. So you need Very. a third USB port to charge it. Right, exactly. And then you'd have unlimited power, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. once the electrons go in, they would get caught in that loop. Loop, right. Exactly. They're just not going anywhere. Right. Yeah. It'd be the self-sustaining. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what phone. There is a, uh, this is a little different, but this, there's a there's a phone out there. I'm trying to remember which brand, which one it was. But it knows when you put another phone to the back of it, and it'll oh, actually the wirelessly Samsung. charge that phone. Oh, is it Samsung can do that? I don't know. I know Samsung. You can do phone. You can you can tap files to each other. Yes, oh, yeah. you can. Okay. Uh, no, but this you plug it up, and you just I mean you just touch them in the back, and when I guess the other the the remote phone tries to do wireless charging, and the other one goes senses it and starts uh, providing battery. Interesting. It's like I get a key device in it, so to speak. The key charging? Yes. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. I don't know about yeah. that. I just thought it was kind of a neat feature, probably a little redundant, unless you go, my kid says, hey, my phone's dying. I can just rubber band them together or something. I don't know. <laughs> I always love the Samsung option that you could transfer files by just tapping each other's phone. I got really to look cool. at that. That's how you can do that with any Android phone, actually. Yeah? With okay. NFC. Yeah, the NFC, you touch it, and it goes, Bink, you, want, you can yep. send the file. Yeah, it's really cool. Or contacts. Yep. Uh, yeah, pictures, all that stuff. Love it. Very cool. What, do you have an iPhone? What do you find? What do you have? Brian? I have both. Oh, you one have for work two and phones? one for home? Yep. yep. He's got a work phone and a home phone. Oh. Yeah. That would drive me nuts. That would drive no. me nuts having to keep two phones. See, well, see, the re there, there's a valid reason behind it is that I'm when, sure. when work comes for your phone, guess what? Yeah. And your personal stuff's on it. Yep. Bye-bye. All my personal know, stuff's yeah. in the cloud. Well, that's that's the smart way to do it. It's like if you, if you back it up that way. But, yeah. but the problem is still is that you know that personal information is still contained on your phone somewhere. Right. Someone's going to get I, the pictures. I don't want my there. work to have that stuff. I don't oh, want. Okay. I keep them totally separate so that way there's no no question about it. You know, no concerns about security of files, that sort of thing. Well, I do bring my own device to work, um, and they pay for the service. I bought the phone, and you know if they would go to if for some reason it gets lost and I complain about they can wipe the email off the phone that's not a problem oh, we can too we the wipe the entire yeah. phone though yeah you can that's, do that that's what I mean, work is going to do as well yeah, yeah. I, yeah. but yeah. most people don't like that because the simple fact is you know you're gonna do what and we tell people we, well, you know hey guess what here's it's a work phone you're gonna that's why we same separate thing with them the, same yeah. thing with the laptop yeah the only problem i have with with that with them uh being able to it's the other it's not just that they can wipe the phone i get that part it's the other things that they make decisions on like uh timeout so I, i'm mm. stuck with five minutes oh. so you can't do time lapse or yeah. something like that, that drove me nuts with my iphone when they implemented that the, the, right. it, the screen locks use, after I five use, minutes uh, of inactivity right and i yeah because yeah. i was doing time lapse of, like the cactus flowers opening i go out there one spring night and it's like, <laughs> wah, wah. okay yeah. that was a useless video let's try to get no nope, nope. Yeah. yeah i but i use uh on android i use nine it's an it's an Outlook uh, yes. client, and all of the um, restrictions and everything, encryption, everything, uh, remote capabilities are encapsulated in just the email app. That's pretty so, good. And yeah, so it says, I've do you accept that the... for about a year? Craig said, get nine on you so they don't have to lock your screen or, or, or yeah. you know take control of your machine. And I've been using it for a year, and I just found out like two weeks ago that there's a calendar in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I didn't know. I've, I've been using the the regular Android calendar that has you know my Google calendar, too. my work calendar. It's got everything all in one place. So when Donna says, "Hey, are we free on the you know the twelfth? I can pull up one calendar and see her calendar, my calendar, work calendar. Right. It's a nice unified app. But I never even thought to go look in the calendar on nine. nine. That's funny. Yeah, <laughs> and you can you can tell it 
Uh, you can go in the settings and tell it what is your uh, your preferred calendar app. Yeah. So it'll only use the Samsung one or, you know, for that stuff. But that's and that's cool. what I use not most of the time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I love none. It actually works really well. So. Yeah, I like it. It's, it's been doing all right by me. Mm-hmm. The the only downside, of course, is to to avoid work taking control of your, your security. You have to put in a pin every time you open the app. Right. Which, that's you know, good. Or fingerprint. Yeah. You can do fingerprint, too. Can you do fingerprint? But, I haven't looked at that yet. I'm going to change Yeah, you can that. turn that on and do a fingerprint. So uh, the thing is, I figure if I've lost my phone, I would just, I mean, they can get involved. I can get work involved if I wanted to, but I just right. go to the, the Android um, uh, uh, site and you can wipe it, remote wipe it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's so, true. Big deal. You know, I, I would know if I lost it. And I could probably do it quicker than me filing an incident. <laughs> <laughs> Your IT guys, yeah, that's true. And waiting for somebody to reply. So. You're supposed to report those as soon as possible, Craig. Didn't you just take security that's, training? It's that time I of just year lost again. my phone. <laughs> security is everyone's business. That's right. If you see an hey. incident, you should report it immediately. <laughs> don't, I get that, but... Don't talk to your boss... Don't try to ignore it. Don't confront the criminals yeah. directly. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I just lost my phone. How do I how do I complain? Well, someone will send you an email saying, "Sorry, I stole your phone." <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Well, speaking of what, you got one last story to, to about we do. burglars. An exhausted burglar falls asleep on the hey, job. By the way, I'm. I want to tell you when I select these stories, I am a sucker for dumb crook, dumb crook news. Uh, okay, I'm going to keep fair it enough. Those. Russian yeah. media recently reported the comical case of a burglar who, we, we talked about the one that went into a, what are those, escape rooms, but got stuck. That, that's funny. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they reported the comical case of a burglar who last week broke into an office building in the city of Orenburg and then fell asleep in an office chair. The botched burglary <laughs> took place on November 20th when a 36-year-old man fraudulently entered a private office building in Sharkley Sh- Sharkley Skoy? Char- Charlie Charlie Skoy? Skoy. Charlie Skoy in Orenburg by squeezing through a small window on the third floor. He then used a variety of tools like screwdrivers, wire cutters, and a hammer and nail puller and punch keys to break into several private company offices looking for valuables. He actually managed to find about 140,000 rubles or $2,100 in cash, but instead of hurrying out of the building before he spotted the mad, mad man decided to get a bit of rest and sat in a leather chair. Oh, those leather chairs are oh, so comfy. comfy. Yeah. Had probably one of those big executive kind. And that's, that's right. where police found him sleeping several hours later. According to the Russian news agency RIA, who does has nothing to do with the music industry apparently, the intruder was first spotted sleeping in one of the offices he had broken into by a security guard while checking the surveillance cameras. Instead of confronting the man immediately, the guard contacted Rosgard, a Russian National Guard, which immediately dispatched an in- intervention team. It's unclear yeah. how long Rosgard took for to reach the building, but there was no hurry as they when they reached the burglar, he was still sound asleep in the leather chair <laughs> next to his big bag of cash. The 36-year-old man was handcuffed and later placed into police custody. Now he faces serious jail time as a background check revealed that he's had previous convictions and was on the federal wanted list anyway. The Mm. moral of the story is, if you're planning to carry out a burglary, maybe get some rest beforehand, as such operations seem to be quite exhausting. Well, you get plenty of rest. Take a nap. Yeah. I was going to say, take a nap at home first. (laughs) Right. He can rest in jail. He's going to rest really well in jail. Exactly. He's going to get plenty of rest. No, the other guys would be heckling him the whole time. Probably, yeah. You fell asleep in jail. (laughs) Oh, you a moron. (laughs) Yeah. Don't fall asleep in jail. We want to remind, just so you're not falling asleep, we want to remind you that to get some rest, because we do this show every Sunday night at 930 on Facebook, go to our Facebook page and subscribe there. You get notified automatically. We appreciate it very much. Should we give a huge thank you to our patrons? They had wonderful, wonderful donations in the month of November. And we have a lost sheep who's come back to the fold. I see that. Yes. Let's do this. What are you doing? Craig's, he, um, Craig's, it, it looks like, uh, there you go. It, it word wrapped. It, now you got yeah. word wrap on the other ones. Oh, okay, the Craig. Wins are all off. Oh, Craig, Craig. Craig's getting a little pedantic Here. about. No, this is that one. No, this <laughs> Yeah, because. Okay, that's better. That's better. Whatever. You know, as soon as somebody. It's all Crazy Joe's fault. <laughs> yeah. 
He had to add his first name because it was just mega podtastic before. We'll start with him. Thank you very much to you and all of the other contributors to the show. For as little as a dollar an episode, you can help us immensely by offsetting the cost of hosting, software upgrades, hardware. There's always, seems there's always a camera Booze. or something. That oh, need, oh, oh, sorry. Uh, mm. uh, podcast we're not, fuel. We're not up to the podcast fuel oh, stage okay. yet. We're still self-supplying that. <laughs> Thank you to Crazy Joe for Mega Podtastic. There you go. You name your podcast. Kyle Nishioka, Abner Braverman, Ben Vaughn, Mike Wills, Night Gig Studios, Gary Lindros, John Clifford, Leon, John Noble. Not that what? John Noble. Wait, it is that John Noble. It oh, it is? is? Our oh, John Noble. Okay. Chris MC, Alexis Duran, Saturday Morning Media, a.k.a. Grant Pachoco. There. He gets another one. Yeah. Steve Therian, Jorgis Rowan, whom we mentioned earlier from the feedback. John Miller Jr., Amber Elstad, Harold McKinstry, and our lost sheep who has come back to the fold, Amy Bowen. Thank you very much for your contributions. We hope you find this mildly entertaining. And for you, we give you a special extra episode. It must be ca- we must be doing well because people are not leaving in droves because of that. That's good. <laughs> Enjoying our little banter discussions that we have. We have just a light, low produ- low production quality conversation from anywhere from fifteen to sometimes thirty minutes. Or We've more. had some good long We've had ones. Some good long ones. <laughs> yeah. It's my fault. I'm sorry. Nah. Hey, by the way, Chuck, I was I was shooting for wildly entertaining, not mildly. Oh, kind of like but, Moss on the IT crowd. Well, that's bloody ruddy mysterious. What's ruddy <laughs> mysterious? What'd you say, Roy? <laughs> uh, if you want to become a member, go to the page you see on the screen, patreon.com slash Technorama podcast. If you're not watching and you're just listening to this later, thank you very much. You can do the same. Patreon.com slash Technorama podcast. Did we actually use up the whole song? I think so. No, no we got another 50 seconds to go. I'm not going to do that. Quite. That's no. just kind of ramble on. That's a no, ludicrous no. display. <laughs> Did you see that ludicrous display last night, night on Technorama? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the Patreon show is all about. We have the Media Corner. Let's do that. Welcome to Blockhead Video. Hey, where can I find some good information about music and TV and videos and things? Over here, in the media corner. Is it Brian's turn again? It is my turn. All right. Yes. Go for it. Hear the soothing sounds of the winds of Mars. Can I go now? Sure. Really? That was it? No, come on. Hang on. Is the gate up on this? There's no gate. That was it? Now stop that. There's supposed to be 20 seconds of stuff here. There's another one down here. There's, there's not a whole lot. Winds at a higher pitch. Oh. Oh, it must have been really low that only elephants can hear. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you know what it is? It's, there's no microphone on the thing. It's actually using the seismic uh, the instruments to detect the wind. This is also the sound of your mother's heartbeat. No, no, no. This is the sound of Craig's stomach. Or uh, lower, inside. lower colon, maybe. Okay, okay. I think we have another yeah, one. Martian winds know, heard so. through Insight's pressure sensor. Sensors, uh, sped up by a factor of 100, speaking of which. What? Yeah. Wow, man. Jim like... Cantori's voice at that pitch. Sit back. Mm. Relax. And enjoy Mars wind. Imagine yourself floating. In the, the wind. next 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It says, of course, go ahead, Brian. I'll let you do the narration. <laughs> um, that's the sound, of course, of wind blowing across NASA's InSight lander on Mars. The first sounds recorded from the red planet. It's all the more remarkable because InSight, which landed last week, does not have microphones, as Craig said. Thanks, Craig, for spoiling it. Oh, they forgot their yeah. microphone, too. I'm not the Oops. only podcaster who's yeah. done that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they right. just, no, they, you know, they, they remember to hit play. They should have microphones. Yeah, they hit record twice on their <laughs> <Yeah>. Zoom H2. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, hit the button twice. Rather, what they used is the instrument for measuring the shaking of Mars quakes picked up the vibrations in the air, the sound waves, in other words. Could you scroll down, please? The atmosphere is so thin. Yeah. Uh, winds blowing between 10 and 50 miles per hour over inside solar panels cause the spacecraft to vibrate 
Uh, the short periodic seismo seismometer seism seismometers seismometers Seis seismometers seismometers. That's right. Okay, recorded the vibrations. I like to say it in Craig speak though for the for the <laughs> common folk out there. Mm. Seismom okay. yeah seismometers. Uh, you can think of it rather the same way the human ear and how we fact listen, says Thomas Pike, a scientist at Imperial College London who is leading the research with the instruments. The solar panels are like the eardrum. The spacecraft structure is like the inner ear. Makes sense. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the seismos meters uh, <laughs> act as uh, cochlea, uh, or, or cochle cochlea, as Craig would say, in the parts of your ear that convert the vibrations cochlea. into nerve signals. <laughs> They're able to record vibrations up to <laughs> frequencies of 50 hertz, audible uh, to human ears as a low rumble. Uh, NASA also produced a version of the recording that lifted the sounds by two octaves. That's probably why we couldn't hear that first one. Like you said, only elephants could hear that sucker. Mm-hmm. Uh, to me, the sounds are really unworthy, uh, unworldly, says Bruce, uh, Bruce Bannard, the principal investigator of the mission, said the New York News Conference on Friday. They do sound like the wind or maybe ocean kind of roaring in the background, but also has an... Yeah? I think that's just wishful thinking. They're looking for water. <laughs> yeah, they're like, like, can't you hear it? It's running underground. Right, if you yeah, hold up water. this conch shell. Yeah. <laughs> You'll hear the ocean. You'll hear Aquaman. He's actually on Mars. <laughs> Yeah. Brought to you by DC. Yeah. Uh, the second instrument, an air pressure sensor, is part of the Insight's weather station. Can also pick up the sound vibrations, though as a much lower frequency that can be heard perhaps by elephants and whales, but not people. Called it. There you go, mm. Chuck. Uh, here's the sound recording of those pressure readings sped up by a factor of 100, which raises which the pitch just, by about six octaves. We which just played that. Yeah, yeah. We just listen to. The sounds are so low in part because the instruments are not sensitive to higher frequencies. But the air on Mars is also, hey, Chuck, magic, call it again, extremely thin, about 1% of the density of Earth. And that favors low frequency sounds. Do you know what the air pressure is on Earth in in like millibars of mercury? No, I don't. We're about 1300. It'll okay. change as the storm goes through or whatever, but it's about 1300. You know what the air pressure, uh, the atmosphere, atmospheric pressure is on Mars? Like one. Six. Yeah, six. Yeah, five. Yeah, like six. Oh, man. And of course, the oxygen content is like 0.03%. Yeah, so it's mm -hmm. not going to get much. Um, now the two well, Viking Arnold Schwarzenegger he couldn't breathe. That's right. Mars. Give us Mars, Cohagen. So the Viking landers also, what landed Mars in the, in seventy six, also carried seismometers that captured some wind noise. But uh, Doctor Barn Barnt Bannert said that those recordings were much lower sampling rate and did not pick up anything in audible frequencies. It's basically they were using uh, Craig's Audacity eight, settings. Eight. Okay. So that's why okay. yeah. we yeah. can tie this whole show together we with a, can. a series oh. of mistakes. It's so. only capable of a sample rate of 4K. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so NASA sends microphones to Mars on the Mars of Polar Lander spacecraft in 1999, which crashed during its landing attempt. And so, and on the Phoenix well, Mars Lander. <laughs> yeah. So there's microphones there. They can just go over, pick them up and use them. Well, it's also on the Mars lander, which, too, is funny. That instrument was left turned off because they said it could cause problems during landing. <laughs> what, feedback? I don't understand. That's, that's what the FAA screaming. says, too, but I never turn it's, it off. Yeah, the, the rubber screaming of the scared uh, craft as it went to come in for land. Uh, the next one. Yeah? Oh, go ahead. No, no go ahead. I was just gonna. I was just going to say that uh, I see it now, but uh, it will also carry a microphone, but the next uh, rover. And I was like... it. Why would it be? It'd be so easy just to throw a microphone on there and be cool to hear, you know, when they dig into the dirt, you know, hearing that kind of stuff. Because they're going to awesome pick up to ghost hear. voices too. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not going to pick up much and again because because the atmosphere is so thin, it's going to be really difficult. Now, I think it's interesting that this next piece. Oh, Jennifer. <laughs> Mars movies suck. <laughs> Except for... It's in yeah. the boat. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is not the first time sound has been recorded on another planet. Back in the 80s, two Soviet spacecraft, a Venera 13 and a Venera 14, recorded hmm. sounds from the surface of Venus. I've never heard not that. Aware of that. Not for long. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much what it got. Yeah. Um, the European... Uh, Europe's... Huygens lander, which was carried in Saturn's biggest moon, Titan, by the Cassini spacecraft, also sent back sounds picked up by a microphone. It was Very just nice. ice breaking everywhere. It's pretty much on it. Titan. Yeah, maybe I don't know. Well, there is liquid methane as well as oh, maybe it was snow just snow yeah. methane. Maybe it was farting ice. Uh, oh, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the science news for this week. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay, in our tradition of holiday season, <laughs> we have we want to leave you with one more song mangler. Song from the song mangler. Oh boy. Yeah, Here oh we boy. go again. <laughs> this is this is We Three Kings 
as translated from Swedish death metal. Mars. Oh, I didn't put the language listing in here. Darn it. It's on our Technorama podcast page on Facebook if you really want to read the lyrics. So I'm not going to go through every thing at chorus, but we'll try to <laughs> sing it, okay? <clears throat> so just think of it with, like I said, a Swedish metal beat. Ja, 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 ja. <laughs> You want me to change the whole style. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try it in the traditional uh, so at least people will recognize the tune. Okay. I don't Where's know the... many people who know this song. <laughs> it's a Christmas song anyways. Uh, we three Where kids are I know. Yeah. Uh, but that's all people know. That is it. Oh, kind of you... like, oh, Canada. Pretty much. Exactly. Well, I'm, t- I'm saying you, have the lyrics. you ask your at? average they... person what, it, what, you know. Follow the link in the show notes, Craig. You'll yeah. go to a Facebook page. I go to Technorama Facebook posts. I don't see it. Okay, it's there. <laughs> the link is wrong. No, it's not. I just clicked it. Anyway, really? we'll fix it up. We'll try to get Craig going as well. To the east, we have three kings. We have gifts that we left. <laughs> Fields and springs, trees and mountains, then the star. <laughs> Magic stars. No. Oh, wait, this is the uh, this is the uh, ver- uh, chorus. Right. Oh, magic stars, night stars, the beauty of the brilliant royal stars, <laughs> western walk, and so on. <laughs> it's like they couldn't remember the rest. They couldn't translate and the rest of the words. So on, and so on, so on. Just, just fake it. It brings us in full light. King Bethlehem was born on earth. Again, put the golden crown again. (laughs) The king never stops forever for all our empires. And another (laughs) verse goes, smoking and the thieves have a thick god. (laughs) In order to appreciate and celebrate everyone who values above all, thank God. Well, that one really got, that was one of the only sentences that got translated longer than the original. They're always truncated. In order mirror, to appreciate mirror, that. my bitter oil. <laughs> Breath is included <laughs> in the dark life. Breathing, breathing, bleeding. <laughs> whoa, whoa, that went, that escalated quickly. <laughs> yeah. Close right. the cold stone tomb. Today is the honor to see them born. King and God and sacrifice. Well, that's almost word for word. Yeah. Elihua, El, Elihua. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be Alleluia, translated yeah. several ways and back again. It looks like land and sky. Let's just close with the chorus. Oh, Yay. magic stars, night stars, <laughs> the beauty of the brilliant royal stars, western walk, and so on. It brings us in full light. We are having more fun with that over on the freestyle link at part of Dog oh, Days boy. of Advent. Wow. If you want to find out more, dogdaysofpodcasting.com has many of those. Um, I think the easiest one to remember right now is Feliz Navidad, which is a very simple song, only has like two lines in the whole thing that are unique. That's uh, true, it does. came out as Nevada Hapa. Wow. <laughs> Nevada Hapa. Yeah. Nevada Actually. Hapa. Nevada Hapa. Rich and happy. Rich and happy. <laughs> <laughs> but wait. <laughs> It translated from the bottom of my heart yeah. to from the bottom of the liver. <laughs> well, you know, they're close in the body somewhere. Liver, right? Maybe if you're a Vulcan. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings us to our question of the week. This week, uh. when you die in what when you die in what video game? What when you die in real life. When you die, oh, in what video game would you like to be reborn? Okay. So, all of us are going to die at some point. Right. Especially me if I keep singing these songs. Don't Just don't say Pac-Man or something like that. <laughs> One of the ghosts in Pac-Man? It's yeah. a little repetitive in here. Uh. Yeah, you know, you don't want to be born, born reborn in Left for Dead, a zombie apocalypse game. I mean, do you really? Hmm. You know what? I'll tell you what game I want to be uh, reborn in. I don't care what game as long as I have a few extra I wanna lives. Be, I want to be reborn in Gyrus so I can uh, haunt Claudio when I beat him. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, Craig, but Craig, <laughs> Craig, you only have three lives. That's it, man. Three. He's calling the three. SmackDown. You can get a free life by the time you hit Saturn. Maybe. If you're going. <laughs> All right. That's going to do it. We got to get Donna out of here because she's got to take Brian's wife to a sleep place. study. Oh. Sleep study. Yeah, yeah. We wouldn't want Brian to do that. Just get her a nice big leather chair. <laughs> hey, I was going to leave, but. He was, but Donna, Donna was, offered she to was save enough. the Patreon oh. show. She said, okay. why doesn't Brian stay and do the Patreon show? I'll She's like, take. you guys need help. 
Yeah, well, that she says that all the time. <laughs> you guys need help. Well, yeah. There you go. There's no, there's no news. Be a little there. more specific. <laughs> yeah. So thank you, Donna. Thank, thank you, Donna. Yes, she's awesome. She, she gets is. the special. That's our video engineer's <laughs> special sound. Yep. So we got to remember to get that in at least once in the show. Thank you for my wonderful wife who does the video on the show. If you want to watch on video on YouTube or on Facebook, you can find us by looking for Technorama Podcast. We also, where's my closing music? There we are. By the way, John Miller Jr. says Mega Man X and Mike Will says Final Fantasy. Those are the games they want to be born in? Hmm. Wow, okay. We got responses already. Okay. Dang. Make a note of those for next week's show notes. We're going to need them. <laughs> Call us on the yeah. listener line, 707-530-2428 if you want to comment to us. You can also email us, technorama at chuckchat.com. We get that. We'll throw them in the show for feedback, your favorite video games you want to be reborn in, whatever it may be. You've got thoughts on this show. You want to make corrections to any of the nonsense we've said, or you just want to say hi. We're <laughs> always here for you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. It's been a lot of fun, as it always. Is. Thank you, Craig. No, thank you, and thank you, Brian. Now, Craig's taking Mary to the sleep study? No. <laughs> no, I'm going to a sleep study? I'm sleeping to I'm study? I'm asleep. Uh, something like that. <laughs> Dang it. Take her. You have to wait about a week for me to get out there. Let's do the 101, Craig. All right. 101, everybody. Break wind on Mars. No, you didn't <laughs> get that in the recording. Uh, I actually stole that from John Miller Jr. He says, go to Mars and break wind. Break the wind. <laughs> break the wind. What's right? Yeah, I was like, whoa. Is there a lot of methane on Mars? <laughs> that would be Titan. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Thank you, everybody who's been watching. We appreciate it. And we will talk to you again with any luck next week. Take care. Bye. Right. Bye. Bye, everybody.